After a grueling five hour drive, we finally made it to the final destination. We're camping for the next two days and we're gonna be doing some deep drops, searching for ukus, catching some lobsters, and cooking up some killer grinds. But first, we gotta jump in the water and go check them out. She -hoo! Oh what, how's the tires holding up? Yeah, holding up. Good thing I got the truck checked out. Yeah, you gotta want it if you're getting out here. What, there's like a couple pinholes and stuff, yeah, I know. There's a lot of little pinholes in these tires, but they said they'll hold up just fine, you know, but gotta be careful. <laughs> we need some fix-a-flat and some new tires on this thing. How, how many holes are there? Seven. Seven holes, bro, getting me excited. Let's go. You see that yellow sack right there? That's Brad Aziz's special top secret sack right there. We usually fillet our fish, so we always save the frames and everything and give them back to the aina and try and plug a uku while we're at it. Right there, I'm busting up on Palani and a pin bone pokes me right through the glove right there. A little small kind sore. But Brad Z checks them out, no more nothing. So we got a little bit deeper. I'm taking a drop right here, right in the hoggy heaven. Look at them all. There's like thousands and there's nothing else out here, just hoggies. And we're also diving on a really steep cliff. The cliff just drops right down to the abyss. When I get down to the bottom, I'm kind of checking them out, seeing where I want to land. There's a bunch of boulders and stuff to the right here. And I don't want to go all the way down to the bottom because that's an extra 10 feet and that big rock right there would be blocking my view. So I grab them with my left hand and I'm supporting my whole body right here. My feet are just dangling off to the side. I'm looking around, checking out all the beautiful little fishies around here. A school of opelucalas around me and I'm just taking it all in, absorbing the beauties. Pretty crystal clear waters. I'm down here at 92 feet. And then there's that little tasty munu that kind of comes around. And he's swimming around right next to all these big rocks. I don't want to smash my brand new shaft right into the rocks. So I got to wait till he clears the rocks. I'm giving him a lot of space. I'm pushing my whole body back with my left hand. I'm hoping something better is going to come in. So I take a peek to the right real quick, but no more nothing. So I still got to wait till he clears. And I can tell I'm going to have a shot coming up right over here. And then boom, I get a nice shot off on him. But... I remember this dive being really taxing because I had to hold up my whole body with my left hand. But as I'm swimming up here, you can see how steep the cliff is. I'm swimming up in a straight line and it looks like I'm going crooked, but that's the drop off right there. That was a long dive. What was that, 230? That was 222. All right, let's see what Breda Z ate next. And it looks like a filleted king cole. I wonder how he prepared that bad boy up. So we're still diving on this cliff. We drifted pretty far and we still haven't seen no action. Like there's not that much fish out here. It's pretty dead. And as I get down to the bottom here, I finally see my first moo and he's coming right in for a shot. I'm getting all excited. I'm swinging my muzzle around and it gets caught on this wire like weed. And as I'm trying to untangle it, this felt like an eternity right there. I'm down here at 92 feet. I just couldn't figure out how to get it off. And I'm freaking out because I want to get this moo. And I'm all squished up right there. My feet is right by my hands. I'm in a curled little ball position. I'm trying to position myself a little bit better. I'm swinging my legs back around. So there's just a ton of movement right here. I take a peek to my right, see if I get anything better. And then I commit to this guy. And boom, I hit him kind of low and he just comes right off after all that effort. Hit him move when he came off. Oh no. And this is why you gotta love Brother Z. He definitely doesn't discriminate. All fish are created equal. How's this broomfish he ate? I was surprised to put this one out of the bag. It's not like he shot this thing just to do a catch and cook. You know what I'm saying? He shot this thing so he could eat them. 
And if you haven't guessed why they call them broomfish, bango, that's why. So we're in the Z cam right here, and this was the nicest fish that we ran into. This is a yellow spot papil, and when he plugged it, the papil started going up and the flopper didn't engage. So it just flapped its way right off of the shaft, and boom, we lost them. <laughs> I take one last drop in the depths, I'm down here at 107 feet, and no more nothing. Get this small little collie right here, I look around one last time, throw on the shaka. And I make my way back up to get some air. Quick little flash of the watch. So now we're swimming into the shallows. I wrap them up right here and we start making our way back to camp because we drifted pretty far. I'm down here at 22 feet now. A big difference from the depths. And everything's just kind of small. I got that moo lingering on the back over there. But I got my sights set on this moonu. So I'm just waiting for him to kind of clear in between those two boulders so I can take a nice shot at him. And not bust up my shaft too bad. Bango, the two for one. I got the Umamale and the Munus, and they did a nice job of wrapping themselves all up on these little coral heads. So now I gotta work my magic and untangle this mess. I got this one off. I got enough air so I can handle this extra job. The Munu made a run for it into this cave, so I gotta pull him out. And then Bango, two for one special. How's that? What a tank, dude. 22 feet, and the other one was 92. <laughs> Same size. <laughs> oh, man. So I cut the barbs off of this umamale so no one gets poked, and we gotta drive five hours to the hospital. We start swimming back in and get the heck out of here. That dive didn't go according to plan, but at least we got some goat fish. The structure out here kind of just drops out to the abyss, but tomorrow we'll be able to hit it and dive it a lot smarter. Right now we gotta go set up camp, cook up some grinds, and get ready for tonight, because tonight we got another big session going on. Let's go check out Brother Z. Shee -hoo! Brad Z was top of his class for the Eagle Scouts. <laughs> oh, oh, we got some fire. That's a chuck eye. Comparable to ribeye, but probably better. This is a $50 chuck eye. Oh. All the fat and marble just melts in your mouth. We need plenty of fuel for tonight. The night has just begun. That's that deep, deep moon is.
And a two-old fish burrito. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Munu burrito. Did it. Munu. Munus. Mm -hmm. 92 foot Munus. They taste way better at that depth. I'm gonna start shooting my Munus that deep from now on. This is my favorite sweet bread right there. I've been eating this forever, ever since I was a little kid. Throw them on the hibachi with some butter and guava jelly. Yeah. Juan Sun Guava Jelly. Yee. Mm. Hey, bro, you gotta try. So simple. <laughs> Don't need to complicate it. It's so good. Yeah. Do you think you burn more calories night diving or deep diving? Night diving. Just more action. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this guy's got the technique. He brings the extra wetsuit so he doesn't have to put on the cold one. <laughs> the funnest part about night diving is probably putting on the freezing cold wetsuit when you're freezing cold. But I'm excited. Go check out these grounds, see if we can come back with some nice bugs. So, let's go check them out. Shee hoo! Oh, not the box jellies right when you jump in. This spot was loaded with these bazookas. Just waiting to bust you on the okole. I spot my first lobster right there. I'm positioning myself for the grab. And bango, it's a female with eggs, so I gotta let them go. The second one right there, I could tell it was pretty small, so I just hassle them a little bit, you know. Teach them to run away from divers, and I'll come back in a couple years and grab them. 45 minutes into the dive, and boom, I finally found one monster for grab. So I'm getting ready. I snag him, and I don't know how he turned off my light, but he didn't turn him off with his antenna or something. And he and boss one Houdini on me. He is gone. He blasted right out of my hand as soon as the light went off. I'm searching for a solid five minutes for him, looking underneath caves and stuff, but if you can't find him within 10 seconds, that thing is gone. So now we're about an hour in. Bango, find another one, grab him, and it's another female with eggs, so let him go. Not the best of luck so far. Hour in, no more lobsters. Spot another one. I go in for the grab to check him out, and boom, got my first acceptable male lobster. This one's going in the bag. I spot another fat male. So now I'm on a roll. I'm getting ready. He senses me that I'm about to grab him and boom, he makes it run for it, but he doesn't know. Uncle's got some fast hands and I snag him in the air. These things look exactly like the face huggers from Aliens. Tell me not though, huh? I see this cute little crustacean slip of lobster on the bottom and I just can't help myself, man. There's not that much lobsters over here. So if you see me grabbing these, that means the spot's pretty hurting. I wouldn't come back here for at least a couple of years before I tried diving it again. When it comes to picking lobsters and stuff, you don't ever want to over harvest your spot. You always want to hit it maybe like once a year. Make sure you let all the females go, not just the one with eggs, the ones with the big hairy flaps right there to get the double flaps. That's how you know it's one female. One little sleeping beauty blue uhu right there and that's about it. We had it. Grab your bag. Whew. That was a crazy mission. Two and a half hours in there, swimming all over. Got a nice amount, but we're pooped. There's Brett Aziz's bed for tonight. And here's mine. Always gotta bring the furry pillow when you go camping. All right, we'll catch you guys in the morning. She. I got five hours and 12 minutes according to my watch. But I need more action. 
so we got to get out there. I'm going to wake up Brad Z right now. How'd you sleep? Oh, I don't know. If, okay. Yeah, it's gonna require a bit of caffeine to get this body moving though. <laughs> Check out the lobsters from last night. Gonna eat this guy for breakfast right there. Phew. Still kicking. Duh. Uh, let's see what you got. Santa's sack right here. Oh! Yep. Big one. All right, we got the load of chum for loads of fun. So let's go check them out. She. This is the first drop of the third session. So we're just in the shallows here. It's about 50 feet. I spotted this cave on my way down and I just couldn't help myself. I had to come in and check them out, invade all these little Pachi's privacy over here. And they're probably tripping out like, what the heck is this big creature crawling to our house? Never even take off his shoes before he come in here. Just peel out kind guy right here. So I make it to the cave and my warm up is complete. I'm feeling pretty good. So we shoot them out straight to the depths and I throw a Kamanu head out there just to see what happens. I know there's a monster lurking around somewhere. So I take a pretty fat exploration drop to explore the bottom here. And I definitely didn't want to hit the bottom. I'm down here at 117 feet and this is only my second drop so I'm, I'm I'm just kind of checking them out, but I'm really digging this zone right here. I got a good feeling about it. It's a good spot to chum though. It's probably like 160 right here. Yeah. That's why I was like, fuck that. I ain't going down there, bro. So the current kind of pushed us back towards the cliff and we attracted this big ball of Apelu. And I'm keeping an eye on the deeper chunks of Chum. I'm starting to notice them just disappear. And that's always a good sign that there's a monster just smashing them. So I take a drop and I see this fat Shibi right here. And you can see him smashing the Chum. The chunks just disappear. And that's what I was noticing from the surface. But as I'm approaching him, he's getting a little skittish. And I'm not liking his behavior right here. He's being a very naughty shibi right now. I was hoping he was going to kind of bully me out of the chum, but I think he's checking out the new gun I just built and he wants none of that. I keep peeking to my right right here because I see this big fat pile of chum and I know he wants to grind him, but he doesn't want to sample the new gat, so I don't blame him. We continue to chum, but I didn't see anything whacking him from the surface. So I decided to do a full sendy. I'm still kind of amped up from seeing that shibi and I send it all the way down to the bottom. I get down to the bottom here at 130 feet and I didn't see anything on my way down. It was pretty dead in this zone. So I take a peek behind me and I'm a uku charging straight in and it takes me about a minute to get down here and a minute to swim back up to the surface. So. I take one more peek behind me, and I'm not then. So I don't mess around, I just shoot them straight back up to the surface. That fucker is dead, bro. He's dead. Oh, my legs are so tired. <laughs> We were super over the depths already, no more nothing out there. We didn't see anything whacking the chum anymore, so we went in a bit shallower. I'm taking a drop down here to 86 feet, and I didn't want to go all the way down to the bottom. I was just kind of spent already. Taking those deep drops that I was doing is really taxing on my body, so I was getting pretty over it. 
I was actually hoping this drop was going to be a lot shallower. I thought it was only like high 60s, but it ended up being 86 feet. I take a peek to my left here, getting fat vana, ready to poke my cole. I look over the cliff and I'm just observing the beauty down here. I love this castle like structure and I'm not even trying to hunt. I'm looking at these munus, but it's not worth it to me right now. All I'm thinking about is some fresh air and some hot lobster on the hibachi. But Z knows I'm starting to get over it. So he takes a drop here and he spots the first uku of the entire trip. Unfortunately, it was really skittish and dips out. We're working our way into the shallows right now, back to camp. And he decides to take home one of his favorite fishes for grind, the Opelu Kala. Last drop of the sesh. And he takes one Joe for the road. I'm winding up my flash here right here and you can see Brother Z coming up with his Munu. He had one frozen taco that he was using as one flasher so that's what that was. But now we out. Well, we saw action, but no action. That's the way it goes. Gonna wash up and cook up some grinds. She all fresh and clean. Now I gotta choose the lucky lady who gets to be my breakfast. Lucky lady? No, I guess lucky guy, cause I let all the ladies go last night. So who's it gonna be? The executioner. Thank you, lobster. So how are you going to prepare your lobster? I'm going to do camping style lobster roll. I'm going to mince it up, throw a little butter on there, garlic, salt, and pepper, throw some mayonnaise on the wrap, and a little avocado to be perfect. Wow. It's the best. It doesn't get better than that. Oof. We're gonna save this so uh, Brother Z can make his delicious lobster broth. TBD. Oh, there goes all the good stuff. Damn. Ah, lose money. So I'm gonna try something a little new. I'm gonna make my favorite punalu'u sweetbread roll with some Hawaiian sun guava jam with some delicious lobster in the middle and spread some butter all over that. Oh, I cannot wait for this. <gasps> that is the best thing I ever ate. <laughs> the lobster, the butter, the Punalulu sweetbread roll. Whew, mentos. So delicious. Really rich with the lobster and the butter and Man, it's just the flavor is just bursting. Whew, that was unalicious. But now we gotta pack up camp, clean up any extra garbage that we find laying around, and a hui ho. Mahalo aina, mahalos for watching. Shee!